Wanna know the best way to negotiate interest rates on your savings accounts? Easy, become the banker, right? No, seriously. Now, I'm not talking about the banker, like the guy from Monopoly with the monocle, like, arr, you know. I don't know why he sounds like a pirate, but apparently the guy from Monopoly sounds like a pirate. But uh, no, you wanna become the banker. So in this video, I'm gonna dive into these banking economics 101 and show you how you can quite literally beat the bank every single time and get the interest rates your money deserves as well as your retirement needs. Now, just so you know, the good news is you don't have to literally get a job or own a bank, right? You don't have to go and, and get massive amounts of money to do this. This can start as very simply as just starting with the first step, the first few dollars that you save. All right, so let's get into this, right? Can you negotiate higher interest rates with the bank? The answer is simply not a chance. The bank is like a hostage scenario, right? I mean, they're seriously holding you hostage saying like, hey, we're, we're the boss here. You're gonna take whatever interest rate we give you and you're gonna like it. And the truth is, we don't like it. We think it sucks. We think it's horrible. They pay us point nothing percent, yet they'll take that same money, lend it back out to us at three, four, five, six plus percent when we're getting a car loan, a mortgage, getting a credit card, you name it. They are making bank, pun intended, just from doing that. It's crazy, right? So of course, we gotta somehow figure out, well, how can we turn the rules around on us where we become the bank and they become kind of our own hostages, right? And, and I'm not saying become terrorists, I'm not saying put on those ski masks, do anything crazy. I, I'm not, you know, we might have to put it a big disclaimer saying like, please do not become terrorists. That is not the point of this video, right? Do not arrest me for someone being stupid taking that advice. No, we're just teaching you simply how to use banking principles in your favor so that you can turn around and, and make it work for you. So the concept of becoming the bank, right, is that there's really only two things you can do. You can either spend cash or you can borrow cash. And what most people don't realize is that whether you spend money or you borrow money, there's always an interest rate. You always have to pay for it. Now someone would say, wait, wait, come on. Dave Ramsey told me that when I pay cash for things, bless his heart, his Tennessee heart, that it's gonna work out for me, right? That I'm gonna be best and that borrowing from the bank is always bad. Well, here's the truth, is that when you use your own cash, you no longer earn interest on that money, do you? Now, if you go invest it, sure, you make money, but you make money once. Now, if you go and borrow cash, you're still earning interest. But remember, when you spend cash, you forego the ability. You lost that opportunity to make interest, where when you borrow money, you're now paying interest to somebody else. So either way, you're paying interest. The question is, which interest rate pays you the best? Now, the best way to do this is learn how to be like the bank. Understand that I've had 18 year olds that have never had a bank account in their life get this answer right. So here's the question for you. So number one, how much money do they want? All of it, right? That doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. It doesn't take a banker to figure that out. They want all your money. Now, how long do they want your money for? Forever. How often do they want you putting that money in? As often as you can. You ever seen people put their money in their 401ks every paycheck? Banks love it. They love to keep you captive from that. Number four, when do they want you to take it back out? Never. And then number five, how much do they want you to take out? This much. They want you to keep it in there forever. Why? Because they don't just put it on a shelf and let it collect dust, do they? I mean, it's like, a, here's your money from 1983. Still got the good old George Washington on that dollar bill. Because, you know, I guess it's still there. But still, here's cash, right? They're not doing that. They're taking your money, they're making more money with it, aren't they? Of course they are. They're taking that money, and like I said, they're lending it back out to you. So what's happening is this. You know, all those Dave Ramsey fans that say, debt is bad. Well, guess what? Banks have got you to believe that debt is bad. Why? Because they want you to pay it back as soon as you can. They're saying, take this money and pay it back. In fact, if you pay it back sooner, we'll give you a lower interest rate. Why would a bank want you to pay off your loan faster? I mean, don't they make their money off interest? Yes, but that's not the real money they make. The real money they make is when you pay them back the extra principal. All those things that those smart economic experts out there tell you, hey, if you wanna beat the bank, pay them back sooner. And I used to teach the same thing as a financial advisor because I was just a sheep, right? I was just teaching the same old crap that everybody else taught me. But the truth is banks want you to pay them back faster because they want to take that money and turn it around again. Did you know that banks can legally, here in the US, loan out 10 times the amount of money that you give them? So if you put $10,000 in a savings account, guess what? They're saying, thank you very much. We're gonna take that and loan out $100,000.
And hey, if we pay you point nothing percent on that savings account, let's just say they even pay you 1%. Like if you were lucky enough to get 1%, pay you 1% on that 10,000, you made what, 100 bucks in a year, right? But they take the $100,000 that they can now lend out, you can buy your own lawnmower. Okay, so you have $10,000, you're lending to them, right? They go into debt to you. But that $10,000, you make 1%, you're only getting paid 100 bucks a year. But that $10,000, they can now lend out $100,000. Say that they charge you 5% for a loan, they're now making $5,000 a year. Now think about it, they pay you 100 bucks a year versus your 5,000 a year that they're making off of you. They are literally making bank, aren't they? They're making huge profits off of you. And never once did you ever hear them say, you know what, you know what, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Client, you know, I love the fact you've banked with us for so many years, but you know what, we hate debt. We hate paying interest to you at the, at the savings account that you have with us. And in fact, we, I mean, do you know how much we've paid in interest over the many, many decades you've had this with us? Depending on how old you are. Ugh, it's horrible. And Dave Ramsey, we were watching his show the other day and he told us not to be in debt. So we're shutting down our banking business. We're no longer taking savings accounts and we're only just gonna do something else. We're gonna sell fidget spinners because those were a great investment five years ago. Right? No, they don't do that. They never freak out about debt because they know they're gonna make more off of it than you will. That is the concept you need to understand is how do you flip it around where you make more than the bank gives you? So I'll give you an example, like we talk about infinite banking right? Where you can get a line of credit against your money, you're making maybe four or 5%, while you get a line of credit, you know, get a loan at three or 4%. So think about this. If you make five, you pay the bank four, you'll say, well, that's only 1%. Not exactly. Because if you think about it, if again, that's the same 10,000 bucks, 5% you're earning, that means you're making right there, 500 bucks. But if it costs you 400 bucks, yeah, that means you made $100 by doing nothing more than just leveraging the bank. Remember, you borrowed the money from the bank. It wasn't your money. You're now just borrowing the $10,000 from the bank to make more money off of it. You just made 100 bucks for free. Going back to my crappy math class that I had, that was called an infinite rate of return. Infinite because you spent none of your own money. Now, someone might argue, actually, Chris, you know, I did my calculations. It did cost you money because you had to still pay them $400 while you made 500. Okay, whatever. The truth is, is that you made a lot more money than you would have done just put in the stupid bank, didn't you? And the, and the truth is you can't negotiate the interest rates with the bank because they won't let you. They're gonna determine whatever the interest rates are. So why not using their interest rates, like when you borrow money, borrow it at a lower rate and then use it somewhere else to make more. Think of it this way. All of our clients, when they look at investments, they typically are looking at at least a 10% or higher return with their investments. And a lot of it's in real estate and things like that. Well, if it costs them, say, 4% to borrow it from the bank, you know, say they get a home equity line of credit at 4% right now, and then they turn around and they make 10%, they just made 6% more, not using their own money. That was money they didn't have to save. That was pulled out of equity from their own home. That's money that's still there and they still make it. That's the beauty of this, is that when you really realize that you can leverage the banks, use the cheap money from the banks in your favor to then use to make a better return off of it, same thing the banks do to you when they borrow from your savings to then go and loan it out to other people, you're just doing the same thing. That's how you can do it. And you can become a lender. You can actually do that. So you can become your own lender. What if you were the one that said, I'm gonna lend money to somebody else? Yeah, I've had clients that actually had parents that lent them money to get a mortgage, charge them interest rate, and they make money off that. Well, if that money's they're paying for cheaper from the bank than what they're earning, they just made bank, didn't they? Yeah, same thing. I had people that go and lent to other people that are real estate investors. They didn't have to do the real estate investing, but they knew someone who was a great real estate investor. They said, listen, I'll help you with one of your deals. Uh, one of my clients has lent them $200,000 but then turn around and pay them 12%. And my client was thrilled because they said, that's awesome, right? Because if I had to borrow at four or 5% and I'm making 12, again, I didn't have to use my own money and I was able to make more money with it. So to recap, here's the thing. Can you negotiate more interest, better interest rates with your bank? Absolutely not. Never gonna happen. Nada, never. But you can become your own bank. You can become the person that says, I'm gonna get better leverage, better returns on the money than I have. Here's a bonus warning for you. Do not invest this to go put into the stock market. In fact, 
Um, in certain investments in the stock market, they say it's illegal because that's what happened during the Great Depression almost 100 years ago. And that's why the whole stock market tanked because people borrowed from the bank because they thought it was a shoe in to be able to make more money in the stock market. So unlike Mr. Moneybags, you know, from Monopoly, no, he went bankrupt, right? You do not want to do that. These are things, if you're gonna invest, be wise, learn to do it wise if you're gonna do it. But you can become your own bank, you can actually become a lender, or you can become an investor where you make more money. And even better, as a bonus like we had in some of our other videos, you can even do what's called infinite banking where you get your money to pay you twice. So now you're really doing a strategy that banks have actually been leveraging for decades. Now, if you like this video, check out why is interest rate so low on savings accounts. Also, hey, I would love to hear you. What are creative things you've done to be able to become your own bank? What have you done to be able to make more money off of somebody else's money? Put that in the comments below.